there and welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. If you are new to my channel, my name is Sammy. Welcome. We do DIYs with signs and there's always tons of laughter to be had on this channel. So today I am bringing you a compilation of my favorite home decor DIYs that I've done on this channel. So stick around and let's get this started. So for this one, we're going to take two Dollar Tree signs. I'm going to cut the strings off the top. We'll cover the back later and we are going to bust out our ruler. So I wanted this to look like a big tag sign. We've seen the small ones from Dollar Tree, but I wanted this to be a big one. So taking my ruler, we already have our middle right there, the line in the middle, and I am going to measure on the sides three inches to eight inches. And that's going to be where I'm going to cut my angle at. So if you cut one side off, you can just take that little piece you cut off, mirror it on the other side and trace it out easy peasy. So I'm going to take my craft knife. I'm going to score that until I get to a point where I could just bend this sign back and it will break off for us. There will be a little leftover. So just clean that up. I also took the rough sanding block from Dollar Tree and you guys, it smoothed out this sign like butter. I mean, like I went around the whole sign and it looked really good. So um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Then we're going to take uh, Painster Sticks. These are the smaller ones. Wish I had the bigger ones because they're thicker and I feel like they just look more substantial, but I just lined off where I needed to cut them. And then I'm going to take my table saw and cut them right here. Now I do have this on my Amazon store link that is in my description box. And y'all, if you visit my Amazon store link, will you please click the follow button? I am going to be starting to do Amazon lives and you will get notified every time I do one. So yay. Okay, so now after that's done, I am going to take plaster and we are gonna start painting this. Um, I haven't connected anything yet. I just have them laying side by side. Now in previous videos, I've told you guys to go check out um, Daisy DIY or DIY with Daisy. I will link it down in the description box. When she paints and wants something to look like distressed wood, she <laughs> lays her like chip brush to the side. And I always try to explain this to you guys and you guys are probably like, uh, that's just called painting. But I did it <laughs> in real time. You guys are gonna think I'm a nut, but I mean, I want you guys to pick up what I'm putting down. Okay, so look, see on the side, this is how we usually use the paintbrush, right? But she puts it on its side and goes down when she paints and it creates this really nice, like faux distress. I don't know what it is, you guys. I think it lo looks really good. I just, all right. Anywho, anywho, go check out her channel. <laughs> um, so then I'm gonna take my paint stir sticks. And since I did not stain these, I am gonna cover the entire thing up with plaster. I didn't want the wood peeking through on these because it wouldn't match the faux wood of the MDF that's peeking out of our sign. So now we're going to attach these. I'm gonna put these together and then we are going to take our Starbond medium adhesive. I do have this link down in the description box for you with a 10% discount code. And I'm using my accelerator. I am going to connect two up top and then we're going to put two on the bottom. This is what's gonna hold our sign together. Plus I do flip Hold on, I don't do it yet. Okay, what I forgot to do, you guys, before you put the paint stir sticks on, panel out your sign. The reason I wasn't afraid to put these two signs together to create this was because I figured, okay, there's gonna be a line in the middle, but I could just draw panels on that and it'll look like paneled pieces of wood. But I forgot to do it before I put the paint stir sticks on. So I'm just taking my ruler, a lead pencil and then I'm uh, smearing it with my finger so it doesn't look so clean. Now on the back top, I put another popsicle stick. That way when I go to hang this, the top piece doesn't like separate. And then I had to take a mama break to play uh, Guess Who with Hank and Everett's. And <laughs> then we go back to work. So this is the jute cord that I actually took off the metal Dollar Tree planters 
And let me just say, I love it. I just sped it through, tied it in a knot on both sides. Easy peasy. All right. Now taking one of the hooks from Dollar Tree, I'm going to paint this in plaster, cover it with Mod Podge so we don't have any flaking off. Then I'm going to peel the back. Now I've used these before and they do come off. I didn't want that to happen when I put a full size wreath on here. So I um, put a little bit of star bond on there as well so I can make sure it doesn't pop off. And because I'm extra, I couldn't leave it like this. It was way too plain. So I put my 20 millimeter split beads in here, spritzed it with some water, added some antique wax. I am going to just dry it right there in the box. Now I'm gonna lay my beads out and I made sure to cover those little gaps that the paint stir sticks leave. And I put 11 on the top, 11 on the bottom. And I am just going to glue those on there. Don't think you need to watch that. And we are done. And you guys, like I said, this is like 18 inches long. This is a full size wreath I have on here and it makes such a statement. I love it. And you guys, we made it for two, I'll say $4 with the paint stir sticks and the wood beads if you do it. So let me know what you think of this one. This next DIY, we're gonna take two of these houses. These are from Dollar Tree. You can also cut your own and there are also other options that you can use from Dollar Tree for this. So I am just taking a baby wipe. We're taking our antique wax and then we are just creating a stain for the wood. I love using this technique because it dries so fast. I'm going to stain two of these houses and one of the Dollar Tree crates. And then we are going to then take some Dollar Tree ribbon. I am taking the crates, obviously, and we are going to hot glue. This ribbon came in like three different patterns. So I'm going to use all three of them. And you guys, if you do not have a detailed glue gun, ask for one for your birthday or for Christmas or for Valentine's Day, because I feel like I use this 90% of the time versus my full size glue gun. I just feel like it's less messy. So anyways, I am going to go ahead. I'm going to use some glue. I attach it while it's still on the spool because I found that cutting the ends off directly from the crate, like gave me a cleaner line. So I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to do the same exact thing on this side. Again, just putting it in the exact way it was on the other side. Okay. All right, anywho, moving on. All right, now I am going to take my mini chip brush. This is from plaid.com. If they do still have it in stock, I will leave the link for you down in the description box. These just give you the perfect distressed look. I am also using plaster once again. I'm only gonna do the outsides of these houses. And then we are going to drill some holes in the top. Again, I'll be using that twine that I took off the metal buckets from Dollar Tree that I used in my previous DIY video. So after we're done drilling those holes, we are gonna start piecing our project together. Oh, you guys, the I wanted to show you this because the ladybug works very well on fabric. That's also in my Amazon store link. Okay, so I start tying this through and I'm like, girl, you still gotta put this together. Hold on, hold on. Don't get too excited. So I'm going to take some of the wood glue, attach that, and then I will kind of flip it around. Not flip. You guys, you guys know. Okay. So then I'm going to use a ruler just so I can make sure that I have it in the same place on the opposite side. And I'm going to leave that to set up. Once that's done, I feed the uh, twine through the other side of our house. And you guys, you could paint this. I mean, this could be anything you want. And because I'm extra, I was like, you know what? This needs something more. So I took the large craft sticks from Walmart. I measured them to the top of the roof. And then I just cut them with scissors, stained them the same way. And I'm going to put them on the top of the houses with my star bond and I just, I don't know, I thought it added more detail and I feel like the more I craft, 
and get better at my crafting, the more details I want to put into things. Let me know if you're kind of the same way. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and stuff that with some floral foam from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take this greenery. It is from Walmart. It comes on a really big pick and I think it's like $3 and I love the little like pale yellow berries in there. It's so beautiful. So you guys, I am just going to finish this off and we are going to be done with this project. I love this. I am keeping this for my home. I love that it can transition into summer, spring. I could even use it in my room, which is more kind of like boho-ish. So this is definitely staying in my house and not headed to the booth, let me tell you. I think this is in, inspired by. So I'm using six of these uh, little tray things from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use seven of the larger paint stir sticks from the hardware store. And uh, I really wish I had eight of these trays because I, this turns out looking so good. We're gonna use Isp Witch Stain and we're gonna put on our gloves and no, we're not yet, not yet, okay. <laughs> so we're gonna go get those paint stir sticks and I'm gonna measure across. Now, I highly suggest um, when you put two of the boxes together and measure across, keep those two boxes together because these boxes are not created equally. Some of them are warped, one's bigger than the other. So that's why I measured each one separately instead of just measuring one, cutting all of them the same length so i measure across that way then i take two of them because we're going to have like a, a top and a bottom for this piece and i am just measuring how far i want it to stick out on the sides both of these will be the same size and you're going to need four of these total okay two for the top two for the bottom after that is done, we are going to go ahead and stain everything. So we're going to stain the front, the back, the sides, the inside. Now the inside, to get in all of like the nooks and crannies of the corners, I end up grabbing my Dollar Tree stencil brush and you'll see me in a bit here. I just dip it in and that way I make sure that I'm able to get in all those corners so it doesn't show up in like the light wood color Are you picking up what i'm putting down awesome so and this like wood or whatever this is sucks up the oil-based stain so well that it dries like super fast all right now we're going to take wood glue we are going to glue our boxes together y'all don't ask me why sometimes i choose to use wood glue versus star bond glue versus hot glue i don't i don't know so anywho we are going to Hot glue two, two, and two. I really wish I had enough to make the eight boxes like the picture, but it is what it is. All right. So, oh, there's Hank make his, making his cameo here. All right, now you're gonna grab those sticks. These are the larger of the ones that we're gonna cut. I did cut these off camera, and we're going to glue them together. Again, this is gonna be the top, and the bottom to our project here. So let those dry and we will come back to them in a little bit. So now that these have dried, I'm going to start stacking them on top of each other. Again, using wood glue, you'll see right here. I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down. I wish I had those little clamps from Dollar Tree. Y'all know which ones I'm talking about, those little pink ones, that would have been awesome. But um, you're gonna just go ahead, stack them all up, let that dry very well before continuing on. And um, you guys, I wish I would have had the eight. And I also thought it would be cool to pop out the backs of these and then put another tray on the back so the box is bigger. You get, you know, you know? Okay, anywho. So now I'm taking my Starbond. This is what I'm talking about. I don't know why I use Starbond, why I didn't use wood glue. I think it's because this um has skinnier edges and the star bond is a lot like of a cleaner finish i don't have wood glue coming out of the cracks and all that stuff so i'm using my star bond medium adhesive and my accelerator the accelerator just helps the star bond um, adhere instantaneously 
So I'm going to finish doing that top one. Look at how easy peasy that is, you guys. And I know this has been done different ways with the smaller crates, but you know what? I saw this one and I needed to do it. So I got these antique labels off of Amazon. I will add those to my Amazon store link down in the description box. And I am using my thick star bond adhesive for these. And I am using that ruler on the side. That is gonna give me my like straight line so that all of my labels are exactly in the same spot. So I don't have like one veering off to the left, one to the right. And I am going to stick those on there. And I just thought that these were a nice way of changing it up a bit and not using like the ones that we see commonly for the labels, you know what I'm saying? Um, and again, these are on my Amazon store link. And you guys, while you're there, will you make sure to hit the follow button? I didn't know that was a thing. I guess it's a thing. I mean, follow, follow it, please. Thank you so much. So we're going to go ahead and repeat this step for the top and then also three on the other side. Oh, look at that. And for those of you that use Starbond, they actually have a glue remover that is what I am using here to remove any that kind of like seeps out because it kind of shows up glossy looking and I wasn't digging that. So you put it on, let it sit five to 10 minutes and then you wipe it off and it's amazing. I'll put my link down in the description box with the discount code. All right, so here's our bottom. I'm gonna place it where I want it to be and then I'm gonna mark with the pencil on the sides and the back. That way, when I attack or put my glue on my boxes and go to set it back down, I know where to put it so that it's even. Why, see, why am I using Starbond and wood glue? Don't do that. Just use one or the other, people, okay? Do as I say, not as I do. And then we're going to repeat that step for the top. So I, I just end up wait, letting this dry, flipping it around, doing the top part. And this is how it turned out. Now, I think this looks beautiful. Love, love, love the antique labels. I do wish I would have had um, more of them. What, three more? Why did I say eight boxes? It would be nine. Anywho, um, I wish I would have had nine boxes. I think it would just have made a bigger statement, but let me know what you guys think down in Gorgeous. the comments. I don't make wreaths. Wreaths aren't my thing at all. Not my thing, but I wanted to attempt it. Sorry, this looks like kind of, furry, furry, blurry, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, I'm taking this heart sign here. This is from a Valentine's Day. Save those, you guys. We could use them as angel wings later for Christmas. You could use them as bee wings. Tons of options. Save them. Okay, so now I'm going to take this. We are going to um, paint it plaster. Let's see if I make you watch all of this. I'm just taking a stencil brush from Dollar Tree. I'm going to do a messy coat. And remember, you guys, you do you. That is what's so fun about being inspired and creativity. Um, I think it's funny because y'all think that I inspire you. You guys inspire me. I will, I look, I might not comment all the time, but on my Facebook page, our Facebook page, um, I watch, I look, I get so inspired by you all. Um, so now I'm taking my vinyl decal. Welcome. Yeah, this really looks blurry. Sorry, you guys. Um, I'm going to take this. We are going to put that on there. Easy peasy. Now I'm going to attach this to our shipping paper. Cut that out just in case somebody saw the back of it. It'll kind of blend in. Oh, and that grapevine wreath that I'm going to show you. I did spray paint it white off of camera. <laughs> I put pipe cleaners on, but this grapevine wreath was so tightly wound. Um, I could not get them through the branches. So I did have to revert to hot gluing this, which I secure down later on like the, that side. Anywho. All right. So this is where I'm not really good with Reese, but she really inspired me because in, um, in Emily's wreath, she used all different kinds of greenery, all different kinds of flowers. And I am sometimes really like one track minded, one minded track, I don't know what I'm saying, um, where I feel like, okay, well, all the greenery has to be the same. All the flowers have to be the same. You can't mix two flowers, you know? So it was really awesome to get inspired by hers and kind of know that like, you can try different things out. You can mix different things. And seriously, 
I messaged her right after I was done with this and told her like, thank you so much. This is probably one of my favorite DIYs that I've done. Um, so you guys can see, I'm just sticking these in here. I'm not even using hot glue at this point because like I said, the branches are so tight. I'm like having to push like super hard to get these to stick. Then I'm taking, oh, I love these. I forget what they're called, the flocking balls from Dollar Tree. I can't believe I'm already using them, but y'all look at, these make me smile. Look at how pretty they are. Um, I took the little leaves off that come on them. I will say, take the ball off, like the actual long stem, place some hot glue. I'll show you a little later, later um, because they do come off a little easy. So I am gonna put these, um, the light blue, the yellow, and the burgundy of these flocking balls throughout here. Again, I didn't have the florals that she had, so I was just going with what I had. Um, but, oh my gosh, this looks so cute. And I will say, I didn't picture it, but after I was done, I looked back at her picture and she had like these purple, like lavender flowers. So I did end up um, adding purple in there later. All right, so now a bow. I didn't have the same ribbon as her either. <laughs> these are definitely inspired by. So I'm cutting three strips here. I am just going to hot glue them together at the ends. This is a super easy bow, you guys. Make sure you get zip ties. I'm gonna just pinch them all together here, get my zip tie, close that off. Don't close it too tight um, because then you wouldn't be able to move it if it was uneven. Once you know it's where you want it, that's when you tighten it up. Then I take this, it's called burlap garlands. I'm gonna cut some dovetails. We're gonna put that behind our bow, gather it up again, get another zip tie, zip tie that up, zip, 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 zip it. Exhibit, exhibit A. <laughs> okay, anyways, what movie is that from? Comment down below. All right, so then we zip tie that up and we're gonna take the twine just like she did and wrap that around, tack that off. And then we're just going to hot glue that baby right on there. And I love how she like positioned the plank kind of lopsided, the bow lopsided, something totally different that I would never have done myself like even just positioning them lopsided because i i'm like oh no it needs to be straight you know what i'm saying i just love this you could see the addition of the purple flowers in there thank you thank you so much emily for this inspiration because it is definitely one of my favorites to date so far um i hope you guys like it too and definitely go to our facebook page and check out all so for this one i found this fresh milk jug for 25 cents 25 cents at a local garage sale and i thought it was so different because the fresh was in cursive writing and uh, the 25 cents it had to be mine so i'm gonna clean this up then we're gonna take it out and we are going to spray it with clear matte rust-oleum and this for me, I like doing this when I paint with chalk paint over glass because I just feel like it adheres better and it gives it a smoother finish. So we're gonna go ahead and coat that, let it dry, which it dries super quick. And then we're gonna take that back in to our craft room any day now. All right, so you can see it's kind of like cloudy. I'm gonna take, gosh, what is this color, y'all? Crystal by Waverly. And this color is so beautiful. It's like a... It's a light blue, but it almost looks white. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and take our folk art paintbrush, and I am gonna give this, I don't wanna say it's a light coat. It's not a heavy coat. It's like a sh medium coat of paint. I'm gonna put this all the way around it. Now, make sure this is completely dry before you do your second coat. If you do a second coat and this is like kinda dry, it is going to smear, or I guess you can say take off the, the previous paint that you put on it, yeah. Okay, so while that is drying, I'm going to take these new tags from Dollar Tree. I created this design on my Cricut. 61 is our booth number, so I just thought it would be fun to put 61 cents in the cute little cow. Set that aside. Now I am taking Steel by Waverly and my amazing little mini chippy brush. We're gonna distress that down, make those letters pop out, 
And after that is all said and done, I do clear this. Um, I don't show it on camera. Taking some twine, we're gonna wrap that around quite a few times. I'm gonna tie it off here, put my little tag in, do a little uh, like shoe bow, basic bow, and that is all, you guys. We are done. This turned out so stinking cute. The bottle itself was so different. And I've never used this color before either, so I really love how everything turned out in these projects. Let me know what you think about this milk jug too. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed those first few home decor DIYs. Like I said, this is a compilation of some of my favorites. I know a lot of you guys out there like these kind of videos, because if you're anything like me, I put them on while I'm crafting, while I'm like working and stuff like that, just to have like noise on in the background. These are totally my jam. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. And if you're watching this, then I'm about ready to pop and have baby M. So I just wanted to remind you that I will be posting on my vlog channel during my maternity leave. And I will also be posting two times a week still on Tuesdays and Saturdays. So just because I'm going on maternity leave, doesn't mean you will not be getting new content from me and look out for that spotlight Saturday because you are going to meet some amazing creators in the next couple of months. So you guys, you know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging the DIYs, if you're digging this channel, then make sure to leave your girl a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe because it's an absolutely free way you could help this channel out. All right, you guys, let's get back into it. All right, you guys, I got this stool for $4. They said all the wood stuff is half off. So actually I got it for $2. It looks like it was handmade by somebody. So I'm taking my Orbital Sander 80 grit sandpaper and we are going to just clean this up, get the grit off, smooth out all of the edges on here. Um, I could not believe I bought, if you guys saw my thrift haul on my shop with Sammy channel, oh my gosh, the stuff that I found at the garage sales this weekend was phenomenal. I'm going to leave the link for that video down below because you guys have to check out what I found. So after I'm done sanding everything, I'm taking early American by, I think this is Minwax. It could be bare thing. I don't know. But I'm gonna stain the front, the back. I'm gonna do all of the legs, the side, everything. I love this color. It's very classic color and I think it works well for so um, many decor pieces. So we're gonna finish that up, let it dry. Kansas, it was super hot and sunny. So this seriously dried within like 15 minutes. After that's done drying up, we're gonna take it back inside. I got this decal, I made it for my Cricut. And I'm gonna put that on there. And you guys, this thing is just so, so cute. I love it. And I just felt like, uh, it says pray hardest um, when it's hardest to pray. And I thought, yeah, it looks weird because it's on a stool. Like, why would you put it on a footstool? But you know, like sometimes we hang our head down in shame or disappointment or discouragement. And then I thought like, right when you're looking your head down, like maybe, just maybe you're gonna see your footstool there. And it's just gonna kind of like remind you like, you got this, you can do this. So yeah, that was my story behind it. So I'm taking my chip brush and the crystal again. We are gonna distress this down. I'm doing the sides, the top. I'm only doing one coat of this. Then I take the excess of the paint that's on the brush and I'm gonna distress the lakes. Y'all know me, I love wood. So I want to see some of that stain pop through, especially cause it'll tie, sorry, that was Tinkerbell tie in to seeing that wood grain when we weed out all of our letters. So I left this in because I know some of you like seeing it because y'all are weird. Just kidding. Okay. So after that's done, I wait for it to dry. We're going to do two coats of water-based polyacrylic. And I do two because if somebody actually wants to use it as a footstool, I want it to be durable um, for them. So after the two coats, you guys, that's all you have to do and you've turned this two dollar footstool in to this beautiful farmhouse decor piece or actually you can use it so i love it i love the saying look at how you could see that wood grain coming through and i also love 
that this was handmade by somebody and I gave it new life and now somebody else can enjoy it. It's Sammy cool. from Unicorn Dust Designs. Let's get into this DIY. So I'm taking two fence pieces from Dollar Tree. This was my first time working with them. Now I start off using chalk paint. I highly recommend if you have some good weather, just take it outside, put a couple coats of white matte spray paint on this because you will have to paint the other side as well. Then I realized, you know what? I should have cut the legs off first. So I tried scissors. That didn't work. It was too thick. Like I've said, I've never worked with one of the fences before. Um, so I didn't know if you could use scissors or what. But my wood burning tool right here worked great. It melted right through the legs and gave me a nice clean cut on those. So make sure to cut all six of the legs off. Then we're going to go ahead and attach them. So they have little clips on the side. At first I wanted a circle, uh, no, it didn't end up being a circle. It's more like a diamond, but it still looks good. So I got wooden dowels from um, Walmart. I cut them down to size and I painted them white. I'll leave the measurements for those in my um, hop video. Then I'm gonna attach it with some hot glue. Now you guys, make sure you put a good amount of hot glue. Make sure you have um, like points, like right where those those curled right there, that's where I put it because I didn't want it lopsided. So again, douse it with hot glue, like pour some hot glue on that, you know what I'm saying? All right, now we're putting another one on the top and I thought, okay, this is gonna be added security. I don't want it to buckle like with heat and all the weather changes and it's gonna help us when we add our lighting. So. I got this greenery from Marketplace and I am just easily going to loop these in the little curls on top. I love that this worked out. No hot glue needed for the greenery, which I love. Then taking some yellow from Dollar Tree, yellow, <laughs> yellow flowers from Dollar Tree. We're going to go ahead and stick those in there. Just loop them throughout the greenery. Again, no hot glue. That is what is awesome. Imagine changing this out with Christmas decor. Of course, I was watching Dollar Tree hauls. Um, or like fall leaves and oranges. And oh, it's so beautiful. And like you could put this in your house in a screen porch. I'll be using it on our patio. So possibilities are really endless with this since we aren't using any hot glue. So after we're done with all of our florals, I found you guys finally that's what like uh inspired all of this a couple weeks ago I made it and it was because of the LED lights I found and I painted them white voila okay so I am also going to take some clear fishing line well it's usually clear and then some chains from Dollar Tree I'm going to go ahead and tie that fishing line on to the lights now I had a ticket to the struggle bus with this because I was doing it by myself. I highly recommend if you have somebody that can help you hold the chandelier up, it will it will make your life so much easier, okay? I did not have that help, but I made it work. So I'm just gonna double knot these on here. I'm gonna do four. I'm gonna do two on the bottom dowel and two on the top dowel. And what's nice is you can still kind of move them around once you tie them on that dowel. So once we are done, Getting all of those on, I'm just going to attach the chain and that is absolutely it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to vote for your favorite project and I will see you on my hot video. So this was my first entry into the contest and I was so happy with the way it turned out. I love the bright, vibrant colors. When those lights turn on, it's absolutely stunning. And I cannot wait until we get our patio together in the backyard. So I could put this under the canopy. I think it's going to look absolutely, there's Hank, gorgeous. Look at the lights. And can you believe like everything but the actual greenery was from Dollar Tree, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. All right, I don't think you're ready for this. This is my favorite one, y'all. So we're gonna take three signs, big, medium, small, right here, as you can see. We're gonna take all of these apart. So take the twine off, take all of the you know eyeballs and bows and all that stuff. So now I am taking some antique wax. I am putting a good amount on there, but I'm not oversaturating it. I'm, I would say a light coat. I would say a pretty light coat. Now taking my 
wood grain tool. Look at how cool this is, y'all. I have this in my Amazon store link in my description box. And you're gonna lay down the wax. I'm gonna do it one more time for you guys. You can also do this with paint. I'll link a video down below where I actually used chalk paint instead of the wax to do this. And you're gonna take the tool and all you do is rock it back and forth. And then I'm kind of tapping the excess wax off and go back and forth, just rock it. There you go. So I could do the same for the top, but for some reason this one was like sucking up the wax. But we're gonna let those dry. I let them dry overnight and look at that. Yes, sis, that is what I'm talking about right there. Okay, sorry, I'm moving around in my seat because I'm super excited. But now that that's done, we are going to piece these together. So you guys, you got, I have to cover up the back. Who would wanna like lift up a sign or what we're making a shelf and then accidentally see that scary like dismembered bunny? Nobody, my kids would like absolutely freak out. Anyways, I'm hot gluing this on some shipping paper. We're gonna cut that out. Now you have a nice finished back. It's gonna look like we bought this somewhere instead of making it and that is always the vibe I'm going for. I want to have a finished product. So now I took a black dowel, cut it down to 24 inches, taking my sliced wood beads. I have those in my Amazon cart as well. These are the 15 millimeters. I put them on the ends so that our ribbon doesn't come off. All right, so now I'm taking the faux leather ribbon from Dollar Tree. Right here, you guys, I'm just, I am trying to find the length that I want for our ribbon. So I wrap it around. And then taking my dowel, I'm just playing around with placement, seeing how far I want it to hang off. Then I go ahead and cut that. Then I'm gonna cut in an additional one. Now we're gonna start piecing this together. So I tried my best to, we don't want this wonky and we don't want it lopsided. So I'm gonna start off with some hot glue. I put just a little bit of my leather ribbon on the edge. Now I wrapped the entire thing around because I wanted this to look high end. I wanted it to look finished. So I thought this added more detail. So I wrap it around and now I attach my second one. And the reason I did this was because I was trying to match up the exact amount of ribbon that I used on the other side. I hope y'all are picking up what I'm putting down here. So again, I'm wrapping this all the way around, hot gluing as I go. And now we're going to attach the straps to the opposite side. So to do that, I just used a scrap piece of ribbon just so I could see how wide to glue it down. That way it was even on each side. You know, I get my, my madness. I don't know if you guys do, but see, look how cute that is. And we're going to make three of these. That's why we did a large, medium, and small. So again, for this one, I don't know why I glued that down first, but we're doing the same thing, except I'm not gluing. I am just trying to find out how long I need my ribbon and then I will cut. So I'm going to hold that up again, see what kind of spacing I want in between my shelving. Sorry for my little Nike boy. Um, and I cut that down and then we're gonna cut two more and we're gonna do the same thing, you guys. We're just wrapping it around, gluing it. You're gonna do this same step for shelf number three, or you can just leave it as two shelves. That's completely up to you. But I thought this turned out so, so good, you guys. I cannot wait for you to see the finished product. And I will say, I actually ran out of this ribbon, but I had the dark brown one. I took it outside and spray painted it black and it was amazing. Look at this. All right, you guys. Woo -woo. Oh my gosh, you guys, this makes me so happy. I am so proud of myself for making this. I just think that it looks so high end. It looks so modern farmhouse. It's rustic. And I mean, it's not gonna hold the heaviest thing in the world, but. I think it's amazing and I hope you do too. All right, so for the first DIY, you guys, I am recycling this old frame from fall. All I'm doing is taking my heat gun. We are going to warm up that hot glue so that I can take everything back off. You can also, whatever's remaining, it just kind of 
peeled off. It was pretty easy. And then you'll just sand down the excess. And that's, again, if you have something like this. I also have done this DIY. I'm gonna leave the links for you down in the description box um, a couple different ways. So I am taking my truffle by Waverly and I am taking my Waverly chalk brush and I am brushing it on there. Now, I wanted a distressed look, but this frame was ivory and I was going for white. So I ended up deciding, you know what? I'm gonna cover it up just a little bit more, but I did keep some open spots cause I wanted it to look like wood grain. So I'm going to go ahead and completely cover the entire sign with the truffle paint. And then we're going to move on to our next step. Maybe. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to measure the inside of my frame. So I think it was like 16 by 12. Then taking some foam core board, I am going to measure that down using my craft knife make sure that fits perfectly in there. Voila, it does. Now taking painter's tape, I am going to create some stripes. So you're going to get a little piece just like I did right there and go further up though. Go in the middle. I don't know why I went so far down and we're going to use that as a guide and that's going to give us straight lines and it is also going to give us the perfect amount of spacing in between each of our stripes here. So now taking Still Gray by Waverly, I am just going to paint this right on there. Of course, you guys, this is preference. Um, I decided to cover the entire thing. You can do like a distressing, whatever you want to do. But we are going to dry brush on top of this. So I'm going to finish painting. Then we're going to take off and see those crisp lines. Oh my gosh, there's nothing more beautiful than crisp lines, let me tell you. And I used my expensive painter's tape. So you know your girl is saving this. All right, so now taking some white Waverly chalk paint, I am dry brushing it on the gray and the white board. I get it, it's white, but it does show up and it makes it look like it's painted. So, and then I mess up on the last stripe and I kind of like go ham and oh, right there. Ay, ay, did not want that, but you know what? You just gotta work with what you got, right? So we're gonna finish that up. Now we're gonna set that aside. Now taking one of these wreath forms from Dollar Tree, I am cutting it up. We're gonna use the two middle rings here. Now taking burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree, I'm just going to wrap this baby around. I'm just gonna keep on wrapping it. I'm pulling tight and then we're gonna hot glue it again at the end. This is gonna give us a great base to put our greenery on so we're not trying to attach it to the little skinny round piece things, you know. Okay, you guys get it. All right, so now taking some firm, this is actually from Walmart and I had it in my stash, but you guys, look at how amazing that like bended, bent, bended, you know what I'm saying, to the round wreath form. And I thought it was just different than using boxwood. A lot of us do use boxwood lamb's ear, which I love and I have a bunch of it. This just looks, I don't know, different. It looks, I don't know, to me like upscale, higher end. So I go ahead and I just layer a few of those fern pieces on just to make it look nice and full. This stuff attached so easily to the burlap and each other. It didn't melt. It was really awesome. So after you get that full and how you like it, then we are going to, um, I just added little pieces of the leaves on the little bald spots where you could see the burlap still. So now taking the remainder of that burlap ribbon, I am going to play around with our placement here. I have it on our foam board, just seeing where I want it to lay. I made a decal, which will be available in my Etsy shop for you. I'm just gonna hot glue the ribbon to the back of our foam board. And you guys, like I said, I have made this a couple different ways. I have made it with paint sticks as the frame and I have made a bigger, uh, like big version of the foam board with a bigger picture frame. So definitely check those out. All right, so I applied my Oracle 651 permanent vinyl. It says pray, wait, trust. Really love that saying. And now we are just going to pop this in. Now, we, majority of us know, foam board likes to start bending when you apply paint to it. So what I had to do here was put some hot glue on the inside of the frame, which didn't bother me. I could always rip it out, right? But on the right side where I had cut just a little too much, I had to get a craft stick, hot glue it in there so it didn't 
like bow back out. And y'all all check this out. Would anybody in their right mind ever think that I made this with Dollar Tree items, Walmart items. I mean, no, they would think I got this at Hobby Lobby and that's exactly the way I intended it to be. All right, y'all. All right, so our next DIY, we are going to use the Jennifer Page Simply Blessed calendar, and we are gonna take this um, Dollar Tree sign. I'm going to grab my Mod Podge. You could get this little one at Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna just going to apply it on. I know there are so many different ways of applying Mod Podge and the paper on. I am somebody that is not like striving for perfection. I'm okay with the wrinkles and all of that stuff. So. This is how I chose to do it. So I'm just going to put it all over our sign. Then we are going to get our calendar page. I'm gonna put that on there. Now we have that hole on top. So what I did was just cut a little piece of the calendar off that we're not gonna be using. Of course, my forehead has to make an appearance in my videos. If you're new, hello, let me introduce you to my forehead. It's in a lot of my videos. Okay, so now I'm just going to try and smooth this down the best I could. Obviously, you could see there's wrinkles, that's okay. Now taking a rough sanding block from Dollar Tree, I am going to sand in downward motions. So some tips here, make sure that your Mod Podge is dry and then go in downward motions. If you go in like sideways trying to sand it, it's going to pull up that paper. So this is what I've found works best. So we are going to take that all the way around. It is gonna give us nice, crisp, beautiful lines like it was made to be a part of this sign. Now taking a grapevine, grapevine wreath, we're taking more apart, you guys. I found this in my closet, I've had it forever like this. Look, it even still has the tags, oh my goodness, girlfriend. Okay, so we are gonna take this. I am going to take our sign. Now y'all know I usually cover the back of my signs, but since I couldn't find staples, I decided I was going to attach pipe cleaners with hot glue. Now, when I put shipping paper on the back of this and you hot glue something on top of that shipping paper, it tends to pull the shipping paper off. So that's why I just needed to make sure you guys knew why I was not covering this, okay? So we're gonna put four in each corner here. I just got my pipe cleaners from Dollar Tree. I think these are from Halloween or something. After we're done doing that, make sure they they dry really well because you don't want to pull at them and then they fall off. So now we're easily, grapevine wreaths are so, so easy to work with y'all because you just put everything through the little branches and you it's like perfection. You don't have to use hot glue on these wreaths, which I love. So I am just pushing the pipe cleaners through. Everett needed his Pez. You guys, why haven't they, after all this time, why haven't Pez been easier to put inside the actual Pez? Like why, why does it have to be one by one? Is that the joy of it? I don't know. Anyways, so back to our DIY. All right, now we have those on. Now I'm going to take some baby eucalyptus. It's actually just called eucalyptus, but I think it looks way smaller than regular regular eucalyptus. So I call it baby eucalyptus. It's from Walmart. So I'm gonna go ahead and sporadically put this in first. I don't want it super full because I did not know where I was going with this yet. So I'm just gonna start piecing it like one by one and then I'll start getting some fuller branches after this. And as you can see, I'm not using any hot glue. I am just sticking this through the branches and it's a great way of recycling your items. So after I'm done getting all of my little leaves in there, then we are going to take the Sola Wood Flowers. They sent me these, thank you so much to them because they are so much fun to work with. They are so light, they're so beautiful. And I was able to just get floral wire and stick them right in the back here. Now the bigger ones, I will show you, I used um, these bigger gray ones. Those did need a little dab of hot glue with the floral wire. 
but um, I use two mixed bags of these. So I'll leave my affiliate link and the flowers down in my description box for you if you wanted to check those out. And I am just randomly placing these. And as you see again, no hot glue at all with these great vine wreaths. There's just so many nooks and crannies you could stick the wires into. You could even make them longer and twist them around the branches in the back if you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and add two more of the gray flowers and then Hanky had to come make an appearance. He was feeling lonely. He was like, mom, pet me. And then let me shed all over your craft table. Yep, he's like, no, mm -mm. I want the love and, and I want to slobber. Okay, back to the craft. So we're gonna go ahead and finish placing those flowers and that's it, you guys. I love the way this turned out. I like that it's not like super heavy, I guess you can say, and I mean, who doesn't love these Simply Blessed calendars? She also has an Instagram and an Etsy, so check her out. And on to our next DIY. So for this one, we're going to use the new boxes from Dollar Tree, you know, the nesting boxes that they came out with. So I was having some difficult times with these stickers, but I took them off, rubbed some um, nail polish remover on them, and it ended up coming off. So we are going to deconstruct all of these, not deconstruct them, we're just taking the label thingy majiggers off of here, setting them to the side because we will be using them later. And then we are going to start painting these. So I decided to paint mine using Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. I am going to paint the, basically all of it. The tops, the insides. No, I lied. We're only going to paint the ins. No, we're going to paint the inside of the two big ones, but you do not have to do the small one. So I just do one coat on the sides and then two coats on the tops, or I should say bottoms of two of them. So I hope, well, you'll see when you guys, when you guys mainly keep watching, you know. Okay, so now we're going to take, uh, I think it was four, five, six, seven, eight dowels from Dollar Tree. These are the 12 inch. You're gonna paint them all white. And then I'm going to take this brushed metal by Folk Art, which is made in the USA, y'all. And we are going to paint these because they were more of the brass color and I was going with grays and everything. So I decided to use this brushed metal and it came out absolutely gorgeous. Now, I start putting these back on, but I am going to distress these boxes. So I highly recommend doing that before you put them on work smarter, not harder, you know? All right, so now taking my plaid mini chip brush, which is absolutely amazing, I am going to distress all of it. The inside of this box right here, because the other two, you won't see the insides. Okay, so we're gonna take our hot glue gun. We're gonna take our dowel sticks and dowel rods, whatever they're called. And I'm putting the hot glue towards the bottom and the sides. And then I'm pushing the dowel rod down and up against the sides of the wall. So you can see right there, we're gonna do that for all four of them. So this is going to be the bottom. That's why I painted the inside of this box. Or you can keep it the colors that they are because the colors are absolutely gorgeous on these. I was just, you know, it was, it was going with all my DIYs. So I painted it white with gray. All right, so after we're done with that, we're gonna take the next bigger box and we're going to apply hot glue in there and we're going to slide the dowels down in there, let it set up for a minute before you flip it back around. After that settles up, then we are going to start playing with our dowel sticks on the side, which we are going to create an X shape. So your first dowel rod will sit flush with the walls of the um, square boxes. However, you guys, my hair in my forehead, hello. Um, this is how you know I'm involved in this DIY. I get all up in the camera. All right, so this one is not gonna sit flush. So you do need to hold it there just a little bit longer just so you make sure that it's, it's stuck in there good, okay? But it does work, I promise. I'm gonna do the same thing for the opposite side of this, and then we're gonna move on to the top of our lantern. So here's our little guy, and I'm putting the hot glue towards the inside of the box. That way when we put it on top, 
it doesn't spill out. We don't want that. All right. So now taking this little pail, I'm going to actually take the handle of it. And I played around with a bunch of different wooden pieces and uh, I end up going with the little square pieces from Dollar Tree. As you can see, I squeezed the side handles so that we can fit them into the holes of if you want to use beads. I ended up drilling holes in these little squares and the handles actually fit in there. You'll see soon after I, I finish doing this. There we go. And that's going to be the top piece to our lantern. So here you go. I thought that was fun. I loved the details on these boxes with the little label holders. I don't know what they're called, y'all. But I thought this was super chic. It was easy to make. And hopefully you guys can find these boxes. I hope you guys enjoyed this DIY. Now we're moving on. Right. The last one. We are taking these signs from Dollar Tree. I am going to measure them down to 11 inches eight inches and five and a half inches long. Then I'm gonna take them out to my garage. I am going to cut them, voila! And I'm gonna clean these down, make sure all the debris is off of them. Now we are gonna move on to painting them. So I chose to paint mine three different colors. I'm gonna start with the Rust-Oleum in linen white. I did have to do quite a few coats on these. Um, for the white, at least three coats to cover up the pink. For whatever reason, the sides with the images sanded off perfectly fine, but the other sides didn't. Anyways, I'm using moss green for this one. This one just took like a heavy coat and we were good to go. And then for the third one, I used the still gray. I did have to do two coats for this paint to cover the pink. After we're done with that, I'm going to take Antique Wax by Waverly and I am going to do a de-stressing on these. Now I'm taking my stencil brush from Dollar Tree. I guess I wanted you guys to watch me dry that. And I like when I do distressing to start from the outer edges and work into it because I feel like it gives it more like definition, like almost like the paint's peeling from the outward going in. Does that make you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Okay. So I do this with all of our wood pieces. You can also just leave them nice and clean and painted. That is up to you. So after we are done with all three of these, I did make a stencil, not a stencil. I made a decal on my Cricut machine. We are going to apply those on. I guess I wanted you guys to see me paint everything. And <laughs> I'm using Vinyl is transfer tape, which is my absolute favorite. And then Oracle 651 permanent vinyl. We're gonna apply those on here. And then we have ourselves a cute little stackable sign. You could even make these reversible. I was gonna use um, rub on transfers from Dollar Tree, but I never buy enough packs to make more than like a couple words. So I need to keep that in mind next time. All right, so that is it for these DIYs, you guys. Thanks for joining me. If you're new, I absolutely appreciate you coming over. I do hope that you subscribe and like this video. Also, make sure to check my link for the next person in the hop and to also head over to Heidi's channel so you can see what we submitted for our creative champion. All right, y'all, we're gonna start off with this metal prey sign that I got at Savers. And we are gonna use Linen White by Rust-Oleum. I am also using a chalk brush for this paint application. This is by Waverly. And the chalk brush actually comes with two and it's about 10, 50 at Walmart. So I'm gonna cover the entire sign with this Rust-Oleum Linen White. I actually end up doing about three coats of this because I really wanted like a pure stark white. Now you guys, I will say, if you guys use a lot of white, seriously, pick up Rust-Oleum Linen White. It is going to save you more money in the long run. I do have it in my Amazon store link, but you could also get it at any hardware store, at least majority of them. So I'm gonna continue to do the three coats. And then after that dries, here we go. We're gonna use the baby wipe technique of distressing. So with the baby wipe, now you don't want to leave your item to dry, let's say 24 hours or overnight. If you try to go back in after waiting that long, it, it's not gonna come off. And if it does, it's gonna give your fingers blisters because it ain't gonna come off easy. So allow your paint to dry. I even sped up my process with a heat gun. 
And now I'm just taking the baby wipe and I am just lightly rubbing over all of these raised pieces here. Now, the more you press down, the more black is going to show through because the more of the chalk paint you're going to be taking off. I think I used about two baby wipes doing this because you have to keep switching it around or else you're just going to smear the, the chalk paint when you're doing it. So I go around and I do, and I'll show you up here, I think it is, where I kind of press a little bit harder where you could see a little more black showing through. But what's nice about this technique is you have full control over where you wanna take it off, how much you wanna take off. And I really, really liked this technique. So you can see right here, see how I'm rubbing just a little bit harder and you could see all that black coming through. I, I love it. I love the technique. You just can't leave it overnight or it won't work as well. So then going into the letters, you just wanna make sure that you want to highlight all around your letters so it stands out. And then as I'm getting in between the letters, I just kind of rub. Sometimes you could even kind of scrape it with your nail if you wanna get a little bit more off. But overall, I think this came out so well. And you guys, go check out my thrift store video on my blog because I think this cost me $4.99. And y'all know, you know if you saw this on Kirkland's or at Hobby Lobby, you would spend $30, $40 on this metal sign in a heartbeat. And we made it for $4.99 plus paint and some baby wipes. So I really hope this video is gonna show you a lot of new techniques and I hope you really enjoy them. I also wanted to show you, I debated putting it on hooks, but I knew I wouldn't hang it anywhere. So I love the way that this comes out. Look at how that pops out, all of that beautiful detail. And I cannot wait to put this in my home. It just looks so upscale and I'm so excited for it. I hope you guys are too. And now we're moving on to some kitchen mason jars. So I have these three, two of them are the same, one of them's different, work with what you got, you know. And I am trying to take this adhesive off. So I'm just heating it up. Then I'm going to get a uh, baby wipe and some rubbing alcohol. And we're going to clean those up, of course, to get the adhesive off. But just before you paint, you should clean off your mason jars anyways. So this, I'm using the Blaster Waverly. And like I said, this stuff is so thick compared to the Rust-Oleum. And I, I prefer the Rust-Oleum over the way really because it just goes on so thick and I thought it was like a lot more streaky and I was using the same paintbrush that I used on the previous one too. So anyways, we're gonna paint all three of these plaster and we're gonna do two coats on each one. Now we're gonna do a speckle effect. So I got this, uh, the Rich Black Folk Art Chalk Paint, spritzed a little bit of water in it. I'm taking my synthetic apple barrel brush and I'm gonna show you it laying down and then I'm gonna, the rest of the time, I end up just standing it up and doing it. And then you'll see, I just take my finger and I'm just running it through the brush, creating these little speckles on here that look so beautiful. I, I love the way that these turned out and I wanna do them in more colors. So as you'll see, standing it up is a lot easier. And keep in mind, the more product you put on your brush, the, the bigger those, speckles are going to be on your jar. So that's just about preference here. But I love, I love these. And the possibility, like imagine this for Easter too, like those speckled little eggs. How cute would that be? So look at that. Love how those turned out. Okay, so now I got these decals there from the Cricut Design Space again. And they reminded me of like the old school Pyrex dishes. And I just knew with the speckled look, it would just, they would be so adorable. So I'm just gonna put those on. This is with 651 Permanent Vinyl. Of course, you can use stencils and paint them on and then clear them and they'd probably last forever. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and finish these up. I was like, uh, trying to keep them even. And then I'm gonna take Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm just tying it in a basic bow. I, I'm not trying to like make it look super pretty. I want them to look kind of uneven and just 
whimsical. Is that, is that the right? I don't know. Okay. And then we're going to finish that off with all three. And then I'm going to take the lighter and I'm just going to go ahead and scorch the ends of our ribbon so we don't have fraying. And these are so easy. Look at this. You know what? These would also be by themselves without the decals. Or if you put something else on there, really cute makeup um, brush holders, that would be adorable too. I hope you guys like these. You guys make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and share my videos and all those Dollar Tree, you know, groups. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'm so glad. All right. Our next technique, we are trying the candle distressing technique again. Okay. So this was actually a rose art, like toolbox thing. I don't know. I spray painted it white. I was going to use it for another DIY. Never did it. So here we are today. All right, so I am going to take, this is actually charcoal by Rust-Oleum. I'm taking my candle. This is a scented candle. It's just from Dollar Tree. And I am rubbing it everywhere, on the sides, on the edges, on the handles, everywhere and anywhere except like the actual like very bottom of it. I'm rubbing it. So um, after that is done, I'm going to get my paint. I am going to paint the entire thing. I won't show you that because, you know, then you'd probably click off and never come back. But I do show you some of it. So as I start going to the sides, you can see like on the handle, how it's already separating from the candle wax. Now you need to thoroughly dry the paint first. I'm learning y'all. I'm learning. I like how I'm teaching you guys. Like I'm like so pro at this when I'm definitely not. Okay. Now taking the scraper, you can see the different, like distressing it gives versus the Vaseline. Like this one is like, do you see how it looks like it's like scraped off? I don't know. This, this version I feel like looks a little bit more rustic to me. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I don't know. But I do like the way it turned out. And I like that there's these different distressing techniques for different ways you want things to look basically. So I just continued to do that. We're gonna go ahead and set the toolbox to the side at some point. Ooh, look at that, yes. So remember, the more candle wax you put on, the more distressing you're going to have here. So after we're done with that, I'm taking one of these wood planks from Dollar Tree, painting it charcoal gray. I'm gonna let it dry, and then I am going to take the candle again, rub that on top, and then take, <clears throat> excuse me, white chalk paint. We're going to put that over. You're going to let that dry as well. And then we're going to take our scraper again and look at that. Ooh, that looks good. So you can see too, this almost looks more like the Vaseline. So maybe it's different depending on what kind of material you're doing it on. So this was a transfer, uh, rub on transfer I had gotten from Joanne's a long time ago. Needless to say, it did not work. I think it was because of the candle wax but I just get my Dollar Tree stencils. I go in a like diamond shaped because we're gonna put that little crystal knob right in the middle of this. You could also use a button if you want, or you don't have to do this at all. That is up to you. But toolboxes are so fun because you can use it to hang things with. You can use them as shelving. Here we're making a faux like drawer sort of say, and I'm gonna do the fix it all super glue from Dollar Tree, put that around the edges, then put our hot glue in the middle for the immediate hold and apply that on there. And look at how gorgeous this looks. And it was so easy. This toolbox cost me $2.99. And then of course the dollar wood plank, those crystal knobs, I think were like $10 for 12 on Amazon. So a beautiful piece and we did not All right, for this one we're going to be using the Rustoleum chiffon chalk paint. I have to say that the Rustoleum glides on so much smoother and more evenly than the Waverly um, chalk paint does. So if you use like creams, whites, and grays often, I highly recommend just getting the cans of Rust-Oleum. I absolutely love the way this turned out. So I'm just using my folk art paintbrush. I got it from Walmart. Two pack is like under seven. Put two coats on, let it dry. Now I'm taking Antique Wax by Waverly 
And we are going in with a chip brush, dabbing it in the lid, then dabbing it on our pad. Again, just getting the lightest amount of product on our brush because you could always go back in. So we are distressing this. We're giving it some dimension, some depth. It just, it looks so good with a piece of wood. We're gonna put it with y'all. And then look at how beautiful those letters look once you put that over it. Oh, stunning. And you could also clear these with like clear spray paint or Mod Podge if you choose to. I did not do that though, because I'll probably be keeping all these. So this is weathered wood that I got from Facebook Marketplace. Knew I had to use it, but this stuff was on its last leg. Like it was about to crack in half. So I got this Starbond crack filler and I've used it before on smaller projects, but like y'all, this was like almost cracked all the way through that it was gonna just crumble, break in half. So I was like, let me just see if I can save this. So all you do with this stuff is you put it in the crack. Obviously I'm putting a lot because it's going all the way through this piece of wood. And then I am putting the spray on and this dries the product within five seconds. It's like an accelerator. And this thing did not budge. If you are someone that works with wood a lot, I highly recommend this. And they're in different tints. So this one's like, a light brown they have a dark brown and like a black and y'all I didn't intend to like be like hey buy this you know on my video or anything I just happened to like need it in these videos because I use it again and it's mind-blowing okay because this is the other side that was cracking as well filled up that crack and it wasn't going anywhere so I was super excited okay so enough with that now we need to attach this okay so we are basically making a little shelf and what I'm gonna do next is we need to screw this little shelf on here so there were two parts of this piece of wood that didn't have any cracks and that's where I wanted the screws to go through so I kind of measured out where those pieces of the wood were and now I'm gonna pre drill some holes all the way through this piece of wood there we go one and two voila and then I'm gonna take this piece of wood and I'm gonna, no, I'm not gonna take this piece of wood. I don't know, you guys don't listen to me. Okay, yeah, I set it on top of the screws. I'm gonna put some screws in right now. Hello, okay, no, stop it. Okay, I'm putting the screws through just so there's a little bit sticking out of the other side of the wood, as you can see, hopefully. Then I'm gonna press the shelf onto those screws. That way it's gonna leave an indent in my wood and I'll know where I need to drill my other holes. Okay, so this is just gonna make it easier for the screws to go in there. And then we will screw those right in, do it nice and tight, make sure you're getting all the way through that wood there. And this comes out so awesome and it's so simple. I mean, if you have scrap wood, if you have barn wood, I mean, anything, these are so, beautiful to make and you don't have to put mason jars on it. You could put candles on them. You can put flower vases. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. So we're gonna go ahead and attach sawtooth hangers again. Like I said, you could buy big packs at Walmart, on Amazon, super inexpensive. Now I'm taking our mason jar and I'm just adding some of this suede ribbon stuff. I, you guys, I don't know what it is in blue and then these are just dried flowers from Dollar Tree and some other flowers from Dollar Tree and I can't wait to show you what it looks like. Look at how, I mean that was so easy. This is such a rustic decor piece. I actually see me putting this in my bathroom by my sink with some photos and maybe like another little shelf for like my perfumes and stuff but it's so beautiful and it was so easy to recreate. Y'all know the business. You gotta tell me which one's your favorite down below. All right. Every, I like seriously, if you can't hear my voice, I love everything in this video. So I took a spindle, used my miter saw, cut it. It literally cut in the perfect spot. Then I stole those two pieces of wood from my husband. If they sit there longer than a week, then um, it's fair game. And then early American wood stain. So I chose the wood stain. I didn't want to leave these bare because I am going to basically like dry brush 
the the paint on so I definitely did not want raw wood I wanted it to look similar to the spindles and the spindles all I did with those is um, I just cleaned them up with soap and water because I did get them from Facebook marketplace I mean a long time ago actually I got a huge box of them y'all if you want to do this project, go to like your Habitat from hum for Humanity, check Facebook Marketplace, because um, you can even buy like a chair, a dirt sheep off either of those places and just knock the spindles right out of them. So um, just keep that in mind. You could also use too, you could use the glass ones from Dollar Tree. So right here, you guys, I'm trying to find my center point. Now, initially I thought I was going to stick a nail or a screw in these but i could not find anything that was long enough to go through this piece of wood so i keep doing it and uh that's okay because it still helps your girl out okay so this is what you would do if you wanted to put like a nail or a screw through the bottom of your piece of wood to attach this spindle but since i did not have either of those things i chose to do wood glue and then of course hot glue because it just gives you that immediate hold right away so you could keep working on your project and wood glue you guys it that gorilla wood glue it holds up okay so sorry i keep on i just smacked my lips again um so i'm just making sure that all my sides are even so that I know what my center is, because obviously I didn't use the nail thing. That's fine. And uh, right away, super cute. Already love them. I was almost like, how can we keep them like this? And I could have put those thin, skinny candles in there, but no. Okay, you guys. So I didn't film doing these. These are little round pieces. They're from Walmart. Come in a six pack for like under two bucks. I initially was like, okay, let's just use one of these on there and glue it on top. Cause before I thought I was gonna use a glass candle holder, didn't like the way that looks. And then it, it was like a light bulb, light bulb, ding, 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 ding. That's a bell, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna get these wood beads from Amazon and we are gonna glue those all around now this takes 19 beads is what I counted and we're gonna use our Amazon um, detail gun um, you guys I bought like a thousand pack wooden beads from Amazon and it seems kind of like you're overdoing it a thousand beads but I really didn't know the sizes I didn't know what eight millimeter beads look like versus a 20 so I figured I'll buy the pack see which ones I use the most but I really have found that I use all of them um, and it's definitely worth the price it's under $20 highly recommend them um, for those of you that do not know down below in the description box I leave a link to my Amazon store which has most of the items that I use in there um, they are affiliate links so I do get a small commission at no additional charge to you um, I also leave timestamps um, so you can jump ahead to different projects and then um, I also leave a detailed supply list on what I use for each um, DIY down below. So in case you didn't know, now you know. All right, so we're finishing this off. Again, took 19 beads and then we are going to, sorry, dandruff, hello. <laughs> All right, girl. And then let's put some hot glue on top of there. I don't think these beads are going anywhere, y'all. Sorry, the angle on my camera. Look at it, it's like a moon pie. You guys like moon pies? I like the chocolate ones cold, not the banana. No, no banana. Okay, so you guys, for the second one, so for the first one, I had a little bit of a space. So I was like, okay, let me space these out. But then it was too tight and I couldn't fit my last bead. So then I had to take them off and I had to try and put them closer together. Now, if this happens, you guys, make sure to peel the hot glue off of that ball because it will not sit even. And I feel like it doesn't um, take to the hot glue the same. So after reworking it, your girl figured it out and it fits like perfectly. I had to squeeze it just a little bit. But it worked it worked okay so super cute i love 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 these oh my gosh okay another moon pie sandwich done 
And now we are going to attach the top. So E6000 here, E6000 hot glue. Um, this E6000 was coming out everywhere except the tip. And um, I still have not gotten one of those like toothpaste rollers. Um, I'm actually sending my husband today just to get me the mini little tubes, hoping that'll help. But seriously, uh, that was horrible. So I would suggest putting this upside down like I finally do right here so that you can get the middle point of your candle holder. See, look, there's literally holes everywhere in this darn thing and none of it, none of it will come out. So you bet your booty that just went into the trash. Yeah, your girl was not messing around with that no more. I was peeling stuff off my fingers for like hours. So there it is. Now I'm taking... Um, plaster. I didn't want it stark white, but I didn't want cashew. I didn't want like the yellowy look to it. So I am just taking a one inch chippy brush and I am just going light on this and suggestion go with the grain of the wood when you're doing it. I just feel like it flows a little bit better. And then going up the sides, it kind of looks stripey right here, but I promise once like the top is done, it really, really comes together. Now I've seen these done on Pinterest and stuff and I was so excited to, this is my first time making my own and I was like, yes girl, especially because I have tons of spindles. So I better do something with them, right? And then we're gonna go ahead and get those beads. Now those beads were left raw, so I didn't have to put much. I did not douse the beads with paint. You don't need to do that. Just go light on this. And then we're gonna brush it on top and on the bottom, not like anybody's going to be like uh, putting your candlesticks upside down, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, if you were making it for somebody else, I'd want to finish product. You know what I mean? So look at how gorgeous. And then we're going to repeat the step with this one. And y'all, I just can't believe how good this turned out. All right, as usual, you guys need to let me know which one is your favorite DIY out of all of these today because I don't know if I could pick a favorite out. I think they're all beautiful. I feel like I pushed myself because obviously I said like I've never made these before and there's a lot of things on here I've never made before on this video so yeah I'm super excited to show you guys look at that it is so so gorgeous I can't get enough of it and um you can do these with any color like even that green color the celery that I used in the previous project would look great on this um wood color all right, so now we are just going to finish these up. Not quite sure why I decided to take you through the entire process again on the second one, but you are welcome. It's beautiful, so you know. So look at how cute, you guys. Perfect. Absolute perfection. I cannot wait to show you how it looks all put together at the end because so with me. Okay, so I got this a uh, cutting board at a garage sale for two bucks. Obviously somebody got like super happy with the permanent marker here, but I go outside, I sand that all down and it comes out beautiful. I'll show you that right now, maybe one day. Okay, here we go. So this was actually a really nice cutting board and it took off like a little bit of the darkness, but that was okay with me. I went ahead and I cleaned it off and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, attach this decal. Now I did create this one, so I will have it available for you in my Etsy shop. And it says, in this kitchen, we lick the spoon, which could not be more true. So this was so fitting and I'm definitely keeping this one for myself. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and peel that off. Usually I use my vinyl ease and I wish I would have used it here because this stuff was sticky and I did not want to come off of my stencil. Uh, vinyl. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and get the rest of this off. Then I'm going in with the same sponge roller that I used just a little bit ago and I'm doing my Rust-Oleum linen white and I'm going in with even coats and I'll do two coats of this just to, you know, get it nice and bright. 
we'll go ahead and take this off here. Oh, the satisfaction of like super clean lines just makes me so, so happy. And this, you guys, obviously I know this, it's the skinny font and then um, addenda for the cursive. So now take it, this is actually an Alfredo mason jar and I'm just wrapping a bunch of twine around it and then I'll just hot glue that piece to the back. And then we're gonna take another piece, and then we're gonna take another piece of twine, and we are going to tie it around the bottom of the neck of the jar. And you're gonna tie this in a very tight knot, okay? So one, two. Now, we're gonna take this up, and I'm just kind of seeing placement where I want it to hang looks beautiful and i'm just tying a knot on the top so this is just gonna hang on there just like that okay now y'all this thing gave me so many issues so okay here we go we find our center point i get this hook right okay everything's i thought this was gonna be easy peasy like just screw it in girl's done no that's not the way it worked out for me so i'm measuring up because i need to adjust it because of how it hangs and then I get my drill and I pre-drill this and then I get my hooks and I'm, I'm turning it and I'm like, gosh, this is super tough. So then I get a rag and I'm like, okay, is this going to help? No, nope, it doesn't help. So then I get my pliers and I grab onto it with my pliers, right? Let's see. There we go. Well, the top breaks off y'all. So the screw part is stuck in the cutting board. I try to screw it out. It does not work. Like it is stuck in there and it won't go anywhere. Then I tried a bunch of other hooks, okay? And then do you see the big giant hole I created? Yeah, that was beautiful. So then I take this crack filler again, crack filler, that just sounds weird, but you know what I'm saying, um, from Starbond. And then I fill the hole again, use the accelerator so it's dry. Fill it up a little bit more because this, the hole in this got so deep because I tried a bunch. I just kept trying y'all. You know that you just can't, don't give up. Would you just stop while you're ahead? No, that never happens for me. I got to push it. Okay. So that's okay. I could live with that blemish. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that's fine. Flowers are going to cover it anyways, or the twine will. So then I go for it again. This time it works, okay? Pre-drill the hole. This time I go nice and slow and it works. It works. It worked, y'all. We're good. This was so easy. You could find a lot of um, cutting boards at like your Goodwill store, Habitat for Humanity, garage sales. You might have some. And this is how she came out. I, I even love it like in this spot and I cannot wait till my walls are painted. It's gonna look even better. But y'all, thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you enjoyed these fun mason jar DIYs. Uh, make sure that you go check out my description. So my girl Kelly sent me this piece on Earthsign and uh, it already had panels. It already had the wood frame, which was perfect. If you don't have this, like I said, Dollar Tree signs, score lines in it with your craft knife, and then you can frame it with uh, paint sticks. So I'm taking Truffle by Waverly. I'm gonna cover the entire base of this. Not, I don't really care if I'm covering the letters because we will put a different color on top of it. Um, and then we're going to take, it's actually an arrow from Dollar Tree, not a house. And I'm going to put the little puffy stickers on, making sure to space them out because we do want to add the little white lines that Amber did. Um, I just love how she is able to add so much detail to her DIYs. It's absolutely insane. Um, so we're going to go ahead and finish that up. Then I'm taking Still by Waverly, making sure that I'm covering our little stickers and our entire arrow. Now I'm using green, so I wasn't like, oh my gosh, the stickers have to be covered, but if you aren't, you probably would have to do a double coat. So now I'm trying this candle thing, okay? So I've seen that you can distress with a candle. I tried looking up on YouTube and surprisingly could not find any YouTube videos on this. So needless to say, I had no idea what I was doing. So I take the white chalk paint. One, I will say, use the wrong brush. I should have used the chip brush that was next to me. Uh, my paint, I put way too heavy of a coat. You can see in the middle 
where the paint is lighter and how pretty and like kind of like that worn paint look you know like it's it's kind of like chipping off so go in lighter you'll see on the arrow how it kind of looks when you do it with a bristle brush oh gosh you guys then i was like oh that didn't do much maybe i need a baby wipe no oh my gosh you guys you guys i tried doing the baby wipe then it looks like i smeared it all over it was a hot mess don't worry we go back over it with a little bit of white chalk paint later so you'll see I'm using a light amount of the celery here and you can see how it's not attaching to the places where I put the candle and it just looks so much better like this so much better so I think lighter and with like a chip brush works let me know what I did wrong though I'm sure you guys will even if I didn't ask but go ahead comment down below <laughs> all right so here I go I'm just kind of fixing it so you don't see all the smearing going on now taking a detailed brush from Dollar Tree, I'm just gonna add those white lines all the way around. You could also use a white paint marker. That works as well. So after I'm done finishing that, any day now, maybe, I am going to get a bow. So I just took raffia, wrapped it around my hand, wrapped the middle up, and then hot glued that down. We're gonna cut our loops so that we have a frayed raffia bow and then I'm gonna fluff her up, flippity fluff, fluff. And we are gonna hot glue that to the top of our house. Yeah, I definitely didn't get all the detail like she did, but now I'm gonna attach a button. That button, does that not match perfectly or what? And it was right on top, it was meant to be. So I didn't have the scrabble pieces and I knew it needed something else. So I took a jumbo popsicle stick that was left over from another project painted it white, distressed it gray, and we're gonna put this on as a door since we don't have the Scrabble pieces. And I didn't wanna use stickers for some, I don't know you guys, but the door worked out and it made it my own, so I like it. And then taking a, another button, of course I had to like pour out the entire thing to find the right one, but I found the perfect little baby button and it looked so cute as the doorknob. Now I'm taking twine from Dollar Tree and how perfect was this that it had the hooks right there? And I'm going to string some 20 millimeter beads to the top of this. I think in total I use 18. Um, usually I try to use even numbers. That way when you hang it up, it sits in the middle, you know, of the the even number. You, are you picking up what I'm putting down, you guys? I don't know. Uh, I think you are. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tie that off. We're going to attach our um, our house, and that is it, I think. Oh, my jack is all dirty. No, then I decided that was way too many beads, so I did change that. But so here's my take on Amber's. Of course, I don't think anybody, like I said, could ever recreate one of Amber's. Uh, her stuff is just so original and her dress dressing technique, oh my gosh. But I hope you guys love it, and I hope this gives you another idea on how you can go uh, down below so you can see probably the easier way of how to do this. So this is the 3D wreath form. It comes with the metal like fixture for it. Had no idea what I was doing, so I did it off camera because it took me a while. But essentially, you're gonna put this on the bottom, and you have to fold like the little brackets over each piece to make the the wreath form stay gosh this is going to be a mess isn't it okay so taking this wood uh round piece from dollar tree they usually carry these all year long they're just kind of hit or miss when they're in the store but i'm going to fill the top of it with hot glue instead of using like wood filler or spackle stuff like that um we're going to fill that with wood glue then we are going to take a candlestick holder from Dollar Tree. Doesn't even have to be this candlestick holder. You could get some from the thrift store as well because I know these are hard to find. Taking Rust-Oleum Linen White, we're gonna paint this entire thing with one coat. And I chose to do it because I wanted it like stark white and I wanted it matte. So I started painting this and I was like, oh girl, stop. Where are your split wood beads? Here they are. So taking my 15 millimeter split beads, I am going to attach these to the side, just making sure I kind of space them out a bit. And I will continue to go ahead and paint this entire thing white, the front, the back, the sides. Again, 
using this stencil brush. These come in a three pack from Dollar Tree. I love them. They're great for de-stressing as well. Then taking uh, Still Gray, I go ahead and de-stress these down because you know, we don't stress, we de-stress. Okay, thank you, Tyra. Okay, now taking some super glue, I'm putting that around the rim, putting a bunch of hot glue on it, then I'm gonna turn it over onto that wood round piece and that hot glue is kind of gonna drip down into the wood. We'll get that immediate hold and we can move on. Now this is where your girl has no idea what she's doing. So I take a big old glob of hot glue Hashtag, duh, it's not working. Uh, so I take the split beads, they're not just for decoration, and I start pushing them into the hot glue underneath, I'm gonna call it a, why do I wanna call it a sphere? I don't know, uh, this wreath form. And this actually is helping it stay up. And I don't know, do you see how I'm like pushing it? And then it starts staying up and I'm like, yay! Cause I could not figure out how she, did this at all. I can't wait to watch her video today. Um, so I go ahead and continue that around, make sure it's stable. Then I get, this is actually a, uh, the top to a glass candle. I keep everything you guys, I swear. Like I have so much trash. Um, and I paint it, but obviously it's not trash cause I'm using it. Hmm. There you go, hubby proof. And then I'm going to take a little bead. I'm going to hot glue it to the middle of that that top piece. And then there was a little bit of the black wire still sticking up, so it just fit perfectly in there. Now, on her, she lines it with beads underneath. I have no idea how she did that. I had no idea what to do. So when all else fails, you grab Spanish moss, and that's what I did. So I will show you right here. There's like a humongous gap, and I I didn't have beads big enough. You guys know my split beads, those balls that I had, but that wouldn't have worked. So I grabbed the Spanish moss. I stuffed it in between the tray and the candlestick holder and it worked out actually very well. See, you could see like that big old gap. I just stuck it in, cut down the Spanish moss and I just made it my own, I guess. So it's nice when you see people that you're inspired by in crafts because you can truly make them your own. And in hers, she has like wood beads on the top, but I really liked the simplicity of just leaving it. And I did spray paint the uh, wreath form black because it was originally green. Let me know um, how you liked this DIY. Hi there, welcome back to Unicorn to the <laughs> from house if you'd like, but all that matters, no. Trying to look at the camera right here. So I'm looking at the camera right here. This is me looking at myself. Am I looking at you or am I looking at you? I just turned my head. Am I looking at you? Put a thumbs up. Am I looking at you? When I say that. No, that won't that wouldn't matter because I'm saying am I looking at you this way? Um <sighs> Put a thumbs up if I'm looking at you. Put a thumbs, no, don't put a thumbs down. Put a thumbs up in the comments if I'm looking at you. Put a high five if I'm looking at you. Okay. Bye. My nose always runs. I wonder if you could see all the dog hair. Oh gosh, those aren't gonna be good anymore. To get for trying. Okay, whatever. Let's just, let's just. We're done. <laughs> Ooh, that's the Dollar Tree hard candy. But never a Disney character in an alternative life. Alternative life? Alter life. Alter ego life. If you had an alt, what's your alter ego name? Comment that down below.
Okay, let's get back. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. 